That's cool. Hi, guys. God, that's more uh, difficult than getting, getting a stage set up. That's just crazy. Okay, so I have a confession to make. Um, I, <laughs> I actually wanted to do a chocolate making workshop with you guys right here. And I had a feeling maybe I would be in this room and there would be tables and chairs and you guys could actually make chocolate while I'm talking. And that actually would have been possible. But uh, I assumed that it wouldn't be possible and I just thought, look, it's about time I give a presentation on this thing because it, it takes so long and when I do a chocolate making workshop, a lot of people just want to make the chocolate and so that's all they want to do. They don't want to hear me talk about cacao and Bitcoin and philosophy and mythology and alchemy and all that stuff that people just think, what the hell has this got to do with Bitcoin, dude? I, just, I came here to make chocolate fucking Bitcoins and you're telling me about fucking philosophy. Um, that's what I'm going to be talking about today though, okay? Now, I, I don't want to get too, you know, it's, it's, well, actually we're already 15 minutes in, so I'm not even going to be talking for that long. But I do want to get kind of philosophical because I believe the balance of cacao and Bitcoin is incredibly deep kind of thinking stuff. It's kind of very innate and very natural as well, as we will uh, discover but yeah, essentially, this is all about the, should I say, delicate balance of Bitcoin and cacao. It's not that delicate. Bitcoin's not delicate, right? Cacao isn't delicate. It can be pretty, pretty strong stuff. So it's about the balance of Bitcoin and cacao. And I kind of, I've been coming to this idea that... Um, that the world is looking for a balance. And essentially, Bitcoin, as Bitcoin as we know, Bitcoin is that answer, that, that thing that really humanity is looking for again. And it enables us to be human again. Um, I'm going to... start with this concept of the unification of opposites. As humans, as humans, <laughs> it sort of sounds funny actually, but as humans we <laughs> live in a dualistic world. We live in a world of negative and positive, of masculine, feminine, right and wrong and life and death. Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a unification of these opposites. So Bitcoin is rules without rulers. Bitcoin is chaos that meets order. And Bitcoin really is peace that meets revolution. Cacao is a very similar thing in the way it operates. It's a much more physical thing, cacao. But essentially, cacao was gifted by the Mayan gods in a similar way. Uh, we'll talk about how Satoshi gifted Bitcoin to humanity. Um, and in that gift, humanity comes into contact with the divine. So again, it's this unification of opposites. In the cacao ceremony, what we think of is the metaphysical meeting the physical. So you have an intention, you have a thought, you have a dream, you have an Im imagination of some kind. You place that into the cacao and the cacao embodies that. It becomes a physical representation of what you have metaphysically dreamt up. So again, it's this unification of opposites, the metaphysical meeting the physical. 
And, and really, Bitcoin is exactly that too. I mean, Bitcoin is something you can't touch. It is absolutely intangible. And yet, as money, it touches everything. So the unification of opposites is, is a philosophical idea, but it's actually pretty practical when, when, when it comes to cacao. And, and it's very practical when it comes to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is your private key. So if you're the only one that knows your Bitcoin, if you're the only one that knows your private key, you are your Bitcoin, quite literally. You embody your Bitcoin. And when you do that, you essentially spend your Bitcoin, you're kind of spending your time and your energy and your proof of work, you're spending yourself, right? Your, your Bitcoin is you. When you spend your Bitcoin, you're spending yourself. You're kind of eating yourself, as Liz knows very well. <laughs> I used to say to Liz, Liz, you are the snake that eats itself. And if any of you know this symbol, I'm trying to get rid of it. Does anyone know how to get rid of these things and then bring them back? I don't, I don't know how to do it. I think you got the mouse. I mean, that, I know that that gets rid of it, but then I can't get the fuckers back up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I won't do that, man, because I won't be able to get it back up and shit will hit the fan. That's not going to be cool. So you, anyway, you get the idea. That is a snake eating its own tail. It's called the Ouroboros. Has anyone seen this image before? It's, it's what? It's, it's, oh, great, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... The snake that eats itself. This, this image confused me for years. It was like, what the fuck? A snake eating its own tail. <laughs> you okay, Mike? <laughs> Sorry, mate. This all comes back to Bitcoin. But anyway, um, a snake eating its own tail is a symbol of you spending your own Bitcoin in... In a sense, you're eating your own tail, but you're also nourishing yourself, right? So you're spending yourself, but you're also nourishing yourself. And it's this metaphor. It's not, it's not so much a physical thing, although in cacao it is a kind of physical thing. But in Bitcoin, it's a metaphysical thing because if a real snake was to eat its own tail... Well, it would die. It would, it, it's, not a, it's not a practical solution. But in a metaphysical way, in a conceptual way, it is a symbol that can keep doing it on and on and on. Because if you're eating yourself, you're nourishing yourself, that gives you nourishment to then keep moving and then eating and then nourishing and then... But when you die to yourself a little bit, that gives you that space to be able to do that. So this is not a this is not something I want you to think of in a practical way, but it but it is a cycle of life. Everything dies and then is reborn, dies and reborn. Um, in the chocolate making workshop, this is actually a quite a practical thing because we pour ourself, our time, our energy, our proof of work goes into the chocolate. And it becomes representative of you. So when you consume yourself, you are actually dying a little bit to yourself. But you're also nourishing yourself. Um, I've put uh, the 21st century alchemy there. because th this, is, this is an alchemical image. It's an image of, of the immortal, something that never ends. Um, is an image of the fountain of youth, and is an image of the Holy Grail. Um, I'll talk now a little bit, just a little bit, about how the early alchemists believed in the, in in this image being 
a part of the world, the medieval alchemists sort of separated man from nature, and so it became a different kind of thing. But let me, and then, and then the 21st century alchemy, which is, which is Bitcoin, um, I'll, uh, actually, let, let me start at the beginning. The, the, the early alchemists, I'm, doing, I'm thinking about Pythagoras, Socrates, these guys actually believed that humanity was one with the, with the world. So there wasn't a separation. You could read... You could read everything you needed to read about the universe through the cycles, through the symbols, through the, through the seasons, and through the stars, essentially. So you could read yourself, and that's, I guess, where astrology came from. You could read things about the world through, uh, through looking at the world and through looking at yourself. And it was a very intuitive thing. So the word intuition at the time really came, uh, really was born out of this time, and I believe it's it's all about internal tuition. So fast forward to medieval alchemy now, and you've got this separation of man and nature essentially, and nature now uh, is to be controlled, is to be actually, uh, yeah, is to be examined and literally measured. And the medieval alchemical practice was to melt down the base metal, add the philosopher's stone, which was actually a physical thing. And that was then to create the holy grail. That was then to become the elixir. So you've got these two opposing things. You've got the intuitive and then you've got the physical of, in terms of alchemy. And I believe actually that Bitcoin represents a combination of these two things. So again, it's a unification of opposites. The metaphysical meeting the physical. I think I've spoken enough about alchemy, but you get the idea. It's all about this balance taking place. Um, so how does this work when we think about cacao? And I'm going to talk about mythology now, because I, I guess you guys have heard of mythology. But when I say mythology, what I'm talking about essentially is a story. So the story of cacao um, is a very old story that the ancient Mayans uh, truly believed. They truly believed that um, the ancient Mayan gods gifted humanity with cacao. The cacao tree, which is uh, represented here, was bled upon by the ancient Mayan gods. And those gods literally gifted the ancient tree to humanity. Humanity was kind of, it's known or thought to have been created by the cacao tree. And this represented a treasure of unparalleled unparalleled quantities, basically. It was seen as an incredible, um, well, essentially store of value, a, a currency. It, it literally became money um, for the ancient Mayans. And they believed it was a connection with the divine. So when you consumed cacao, you were connecting with the divine. You were literally connecting uh, with the gods. You can kind of see here that the, the, like this is an image of the god. So it's, it's literally life meeting death. It is, it, it's a very powerful thing for these people. They literally believe that they became godlike when they consumed this stuff. So much so, actually, that um, one of the ancient Mayan 
uh, well, actually, he was an Aztec. You might have heard of Montezuma. He actually used to consume 60 cups of cacao per day. So he was this incredible warrior. And because of the satating, because of the sustaining ability of cacao, it literally, you know, people would go to war on cacao. It was, it, it enabled them to live through battle literally just on cacao. It was, it was so, so powerful. So, it was gifted by the gods, and in that gift, it essentially, I like to say, it enabled, it enabled humans to bypass the extraction process needed to acquire the pristine asset. So the pristine asset was so valuable that considering it was, it was a treasure, people didn't need to go to war for it. People didn't need to kill animals for it. People didn't need to extract it from the earth. And in that sense, the ancient minds literally believed it was a harmonizing thing. So it literally balanced humans and nature. And this is, this is that balancing side of things that I think Bitcoin does in exactly the same way. Bitcoin enters the world in a seamless way. I like to think of Bitcoin also being gifted by the god of Satoshi. And it was an unconditional gift. Satoshi didn't expect anything in return. And in that gift, it also balances human and nature. Well, humans and nature. And it's very much bypassing the extraction process. Again, humans don't need to kill an animal to, to mine Bitcoin. They don't need to go to war to mine Bitcoin. It's, it's an incredibly energy, cost-effective energy process. So the balancing of Bitcoin and cacao is incredibly profound. It, 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 it happens in a macro sense, in a physical macro geological way. It happens in an individual physical way. And it also happens in an individual's metaphysical experience. I like to think of it literally as a metaphysical transformation. We'll get, we'll get into that just a little bit. Um, I actually don't know how much longer I've got. But that's okay. I'll just keep going until someone... Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, great, great, great. Nice, thank you, man. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, this is crazy. Okay. So, I could talk a little bit about the sacrifice, but you know what? You guys want to hear about the balancing side on a physical way, okay? Because we're fucking Bitcoiners, we do things in a fucking physical way, right? We have our head... No, let, let me put this right. We have our feet on the ground, but we have our heads in the clouds. I mean, that, that's my take on Bitcoiners. Some people might say, fuck, this guy's so fucking woo-woo. I mean, it's true. I'm as woo-woo as it gets, but it's a balance. And this is, this is why I think, this is why I love talking about this stuff. Because as much as Bitcoin is a tool, as much as Bitcoin is a practical thing in the world, helping people realize their life, essentially, um, the Bitcoin is a metaphysical transformation. And I think that's the balance of Bitcoin. It is truly a metaphysical thing that operates in us. So it's a tool that operates through us and becomes this metaphysical exploration. Um, how does Bitcoin balance? How does cacao balance? How does Bitcoin balance? I think... Um, this is cacao down here, by the way. Actually, that's the cacao. 
Does it, has anyone? I actually still haven't held one of these fucking things. It's a, a cacao bean, a cacao pod. Yeah, you. I actually never held one. I know. I feel like such a fucking imposter. Huh? Yeah, that's what I've heard. Right? So there's fruit that you just consume, right? And then there's beans that you also, uh, you know, that the beans dry out. <laughs> the beans dry out. And, uh, yeah, and you, you, you're left with these, these well, actually, then you, can, you, then you roast them a bit and then they become cacao nibs and then you consume, consume the nibs. The ancient Mayans would grind it up into a paste uh, and then literally just add the water. The grinding takes days, by the way, and that seriously is proof of work. Um, the, well, actually, maybe I'll leave it to you guys. Do you, do you want to hear about, well, actually, you know what, you know what, it's my presentation, fucking, I'll do it at the moment. I do, I do need to talk a little bit about the chemical side of things, and, but I don't want to forget about the metaphysical stuff because it's, it's, I think it's a balance, right? It's a balance. So let me talk about the chemical stuff first. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, <laughs> cacao. I'll talk about the, the cacao is more physical than the Bitcoin it, in, well, at, first, at first glance, right? So essentially, when we're thinking of cacao, um, we want to look at these properties. There's the properties of the antioxidants. And again, this, this unconditional giving comes up when I, th when I talk about antioxidants, right? Antioxidants basically unconditionally give um, electrons to the, I'm going to forget this now, uh, the, <laughs> the free radicals. So you got free radicals running around your body, and they are trying to protect you. But in doing that, in doing that, they can steal electrons from already balanced compounds. When the antioxidant comes along, they unconditionally give free electrons to the free radicals, thereby balancing the elect balancing the free radicals out. And again, you get this homeostasis. Everything, actually, I think, is, is looking for a sense of balance in the world. And, you know, we find it in green tea, in red wine, and in cacao. So, incredibly important stuff for your health. And actually, I think the ancient... Well, anyway, they, they were just healthier in general, but... Um, when you get an abundance of antioxidants, that's when you start to build this stuff up called nitric oxide. And the nitric oxide is literally what's known as a vasodilator, which expands the blood vessels. This is where the heart opening stuff comes in physically, right? It also happens in an emotional or metaphysical way. But physically, your blood vessels start to open up when you consume cacao. You've got to have the right cacao, obviously. Like, if you go munching on a Hershey bar, you, it's not going to quite be the same. But when you get that expansion of the blood vessels, that's when you start to literally increase the blood flow. The increase of blood flow regulates your blood pressure. They've actually done testing on this stuff, and it's actually even more effective than aspirin at regulating your blood pressure, which is, is pretty insane. So you're literally getting a balancing through the antioxidants, then you're getting this heart opening effect, you know, literally from the nitric oxide. And then you've got these stuff called neurotransmitters that get affected. You've got serotonin, dopamine, endorphins, and oxytocin. Um, they all get stimulated and activated. Your serotonin gets activated by this stuff called tryptophan. 
Tryptophan is an amino acid which increases the production of serotonin. Serotonin is your mood sensing hormone, right? So your mood just increases straight away. Then you've got this stuff called phenylethylamine, which increases the production of your dopamine. You know, dopamine is your reward sensing hormone. Same thing happens with endorphins, but endorphins are about pain. So your pain threshold gets higher. And then you've got this stuff called oxytocin. And that's the sort of the big one that people love to talk about. It's the love hormone. And people literally, uh, they're, they're, actually, actually oxytocin isn't increased at that point. It just gets activated and stimulated. When you come into a group situation or essentially a romantic situation, your oxytocin is released. So chemically, this stuff operates in a very physical way. It produces, a, you know, so from a chemical reaction, you're, you're getting a physical effect. After you get a physical effect, you're then getting this, you know, through the oxytocin, through, and this other stuff called anandamide as well, which is literally known as a bliss molecule, which literally attaches to the cannabinoid receptor and operates exactly like smoking dope. So you're, you're literally getting this bliss feeling over you as well. All this stuff, I think, is in combination, which is why we get to this, um, this concept of aphrodisiac, right? Because I think it's actually all these things operating at the same time. Um, so, that's the physical side of things. You've got the macros, like the fat composition, amazing balance of omega-3 and omega-6. You've got one of the, in fact, the highest amounts of magnesium in, ca in cacao, which literally is, is incredible for your cell function. You've got potassium, you've got phosphorus, iron, copper, manganese, selenium, zinc, everything you can imagine. It's complete food. It's literally a superfood, this stuff. So you've got all that stuff, right? That, that literally is what enables this physical heart opening. But I want to get to this concept of the balance of the individual, okay? And this is where I think Bitcoin and cacao have similarity. When we come to Bitcoin, I like to think of this concept of the selfish hodl. We all come to Bitcoin, at least I would say 99% of us probably, have come to Bitcoin with some kind of concept of number go up. It's, it's about the hodl, right? It's about that concept, well, if I hold on to this thing, it's going to give me more money. So you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to hodl. It starts out from essentially, I would say, a selfish, sort of greedy perspective. But what that does is, in a sly roundabout way, it gets you thinking, well, you know what? This, um, this waiting thing is, is kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of good. It's kind of good for me. It's, it leads to what we know as low time preference. That low time preference then becomes this kind of delayed gratification. So from the selfishness, things turn around and they become, well, kind of positive. They become, hang on, I'm kind of now, I started out being, it's a bit like, you know, we, we, we came for the gains, but we stayed for the revolution because now we're thinking, well, actually, this is, this is kind of a good thing. Like, being selfish is kind of, like, positive here. And, and I don't know if many of you have heard of Ayn Rand, but she's very much into this concept of selfishness leading to self-love. And that self-love really is the basis for altruistic love, for... for you know, having abundance of love. And that, 
that's really my point here is that, again, in this sly roundabout way, Bitcoin, it, it, it starts out from a point of, well, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be something I kind of shouldn't be. But when I do that, I kind of start to think, well, actually now I'm being really kind of good and I'm kind of accepting myself. I'm kind of saying to myself, well, actually, this is good. This is good for me. And that, that time, I think time is really important here because when you start to give yourself the time in, in that concept of you know, low time preference, that's when you're able to say, well, what is actually better for me? What am I actually doing here? What do I really want with my life? Who, who, I, who am I? And this is that concept of mythology when I say the story is the individual. You are your mythology. Like everything we do is our story, is the mythology. So people, some, sometimes people sort of say, what the fuck has mythology got to do with Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin enables you to think about yourself in a really profound way and say, what am I doing here? How do I want to spend my time? And who do I want to be? And that is your mythology. That is your story. So from the selfish huddle, we go to Bitcoin and the mirror. You start to look at yourself. Now, a lot of people can't look at themselves for very long. And that, that's totally fine. <laughs> But those who can seriously look at themselves, they discover a lot of things and they start to go down all these rabbit holes. Well, what, what is my health all about? What is my education all about? What is the government all about? You know, all of these things start to pop up. And really, that's when the whole concept of value starts to transform. And I believe now we're verging on what becomes a metaphysical transformation. Now, you can go through a dark night of the soul here. You can start to question, holy shit, what the fuck am I doing with myself? Right? And this, this happens in cacao ceremonies because cacao has the same thing. It starts to ask you, what is your intent? What is your purpose? Or I shouldn't really say purpose, but... but what, what really is driving you now? So that, and Jung calls this the individuation process, by the way. That sort of development is what we all need to go through. And it can be dark for some people because some people want to, you know, snort coke and screw hookers and all that kind of stuff. Well, Bitcoin allows you to do that. And that's totally, I think, something that people need to go through, right? There's, there's no wrongs in Bitcoin in that way. And I think this is the concept of the accepting of the self. And it's something that's been repressed for so long in Western society. And this all stems back from the Judeo-Christian idea that don't be a bad person. Don't be a selfish person. Don't be a greedy person. And when you, when you get rid of all that stuff, when you shove it under the carpet again and again and again, well, a fucking monster grows under there. And that's, that's when shit gets real. That's when it's really fucking scary. So Bitcoin is balancing that. Bitcoin is allowing us to be healthy when we're greedy, to be healthily selfish. What, like selfishness, again, I come back to Ayn Rand, it's, it's that basis of, I believe what it is to be truly human. Bitcoin is free speech. Free speech is freedom of expression. Freedom of expression is the identification of the self. The identification of the self is the acceptance of the self. 
And when you truly accept yourself, you truly have unconditional love for yourself. And that love is abundant. That's the true love in this world. It's love for the self that is truly abundant. Because when it's abundant for yourself, then you have it altruistically for everyone around you. That's when you can truly give yourself to other people. And I think that is the balance within you becomes a metaphysical understanding of what, of what value really is. And, you, you, and then you start to go, you, you start to get deeper and deeper into what is existence and all that kind of stuff. It's fucking crazy. But ultimately that balance is struck within you and that truly is what Bitcoin, I believe, is here for, is to give us a sense of humanity again by allowing us to be human, by allowing us to truly love ourselves. And that's, it's a difficult thing from where, from where we've come from. So Bitcoin and cacao are the balance the world is, is needing. Um, I think I've got just a few more minutes. Thank you, everyone. I, I really appreciate your time and attention. Um, does anyone have any questions? I think I'm going to... Oh, actually, I should just mention, just before we go to questions, um, I've been doing these chocolate-making workshops. They're, they're Bitcoin chocolate-making workshops. I was going to do one here with you guys. Like, I, 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 I don't get me wrong. Like, this would have actually been really good. I mean, I don't have a fridge right here, and but it, like, there's hot water out there. Would have been great. Yeah. We'll do it next time, right? We'll do it next time. It's a lot of fun, right? It's a lot of fun. I'm going to, so I'll do, I'll do a chocolate making workshop. I checked out my hotel room. I don't actually have a, a fridge in my hotel room. I usually do them in my hotel room. Liz has got one. Okay, let's do one at Liz's, at Liz's, at <laughs> Liz's hotel room. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. Okay, so we're all coming back to Liz's place, if you want, to make chocolate. I'll show you, I, I mean, you know, uh, you can go to this link here. This is, uh, oh shit, now I really do have to get rid of um, Hang on, I'll, I'll do this one here. That's, um, that's the link to the website, and that's the link uh, if that website doesn't work. But anyway. I can post on Twitter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if, if you want to come, just, just contact me um, or in the speakers thing or the events thing. It's fun. Chocolate making is great. Does anyone do any chocolate making here? All right, cool. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, man. It's transformative stuff. I mean, as Bitcoiners, uh, like as Bitcoiners, we, we are, we are, uh, we are we're 21st century alchemists. And the chocolate making process is, is al it, it literally, I believe it's, it's, it's sort of like a fountain of youth kind of thing. It's, uh, it's really fucking cool. Like, yeah. Come on, guys. It's going to be awesome. Um, does anyone have any questions on cacao? Or I, I, I keep, I can keep. Uh, I've got three minutes. Yeah. That's a fucking great question. So, I've, 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 um, I've got some details. Johnny, 
has um, hooked me up with a El Salvadorian cake. Well, actually, I don't know if you guys know Chiri Chir Chirito. He sells coffee directly f for Bitcoin. For like, he sells directly from the farmers to you for Bitcoin. And we're going to set up something where you can buy cacao, cacao powder, maybe even cacao paste, cacao nibs, the whole thing from his farm for Bitcoin. That's the plan. So I bought some 100% uh, cacao bar in Nicaragua okay. weeks ago, and I, I took a bite, and it was kind of nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Hundred percent kick out. Look, man, I don't know what the ingredients are in these. Th like, you know, yeah. there's this whole list of cadmium and uh, what's the other one? Some other like, shit. Is that like, yeah, was I supposed to eat it? Well, hundred percent supposed to be mixed with stuff. Okay, so, so the difference between. I don't know what it said, but if it if it said cacao or if it said cocoa. So if it said cacao, then that's great because you would have had the cacao butter with the cacao powder, like it's all mixed in there. It probably would have tasted pretty crazy, man, because we don't eat regular cacao when we buy a Hershey's bar. Yeah. That's not cacao. That, that's literally sugar and milk. That's like, like no, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they they make it they make it brown by adding a little bit of cocoa powder that's but that's not yeah i mean ceremonial cacao for example is is like it's got all the magnet all the the gear because it hasn't been roasted for days and it hasn't yeah, it hasn't got sugar sugar by the way i really want to say this sugar is fiat <laughs> there you go i fucking said it sugar is fiat right like, like, what sugar does to the body is what fiat does to our fucking society. It literally fucking rips the shit out of it. It, it dilutes it. It fucking, it's cheap to make. It's quick to make. It's fucking nasty, addictive, fucking terrible shit. And it fucks your body. And... You know, from heart disease to diabetes to stroke to... You can fucking name it. It's all from inflammation. It's all from a fucking breaking down of the cell. And what, what, what does sugar do? It literally attacks the cells, right? It starves the cells. The cells can no longer function properly. They're fucking screaming out, telling the pancreas, look, dude, there's too much insulin here. The insulin just keeps coming because there's no way of getting to the pancreas to, to tell the pancreas to stop. And so you're flooding the system with insulin, which ends up being this fucking adipose tissue bullshit. And um, you're fucking dying slowly. You're, sell you're starving slowly. So, yeah, don't, don't do sugar at all. I mean, don't really do too many carbs either. But anyway, like, there's loads of shit to... How are we doing, guys? You ready to roll? Yeah, yeah. Look, I got it here, man. I'm <laughs> fucking... I'm so out there, man. <laughs> All right, people. Thank you so much. If you want any details, thank you. Come and see me after. Thank you, people.